Welcome to Get It Done Entrepreneurs, where we talk with founders of companies who bet on themselves and won. My name is Rich Lebrun, and I am the founder and CEO of Lebrun Advisory Group. You can find us at rlebrun.com. Our mission is to help our clients build wealth through business ownership. Stick around to the end of the show and we'll reveal how you can be our next guest. Our special guest today is Howard Wolpoff. Howard is a chief marketing strategist at Profit Masters Business Solutions. He's a former marketing executive for the Brooklyn Cyclones, which is a minor league baseball team, Chelsea Pierce Sports and Entertainment Complex, and two marketing and advertising agencies, Best Media in Houston and Client Focus Media in Jacksonville, Florida. He has also served as Director of Sales and Marketing at 1010 XL Radio and Westwood One Radio. With a master's degree from Fordham University in marketing and over 25 years of marketing professional experience, Howard works with business owners and their marketing teams to improve marketing results, increase productivity through systems and automation, and launch campaigns that actually convert. He is currently a host of a marketing of marketing champions a segment where he interviews owners and CEOs of marketing and advertising agencies around the country on dailyadbrief.com. He was born and raised in New York City. Howard moved to Jacksonville in 2007. He's married and has three children, and he's also an author of a new book called Business Marketing Maneuvers, How I Could, How Do I Find 100000 in Any Business in 45 Minutes. Now, who doesn't want to hear about that? You can find Howard at ProfitMasterBusinessSolutions.com. With all that said, welcome, Howard. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. It's very nice to be here, Rich. Yeah, great, great bio. A lot going on in your life. And our listeners want to know a little bit about your story, maybe what caused you to get into your own business, to do what you're doing. Uh, even right, We're going to talk about your book here shortly, uh, some of the some of the thought process that we call when you get to the tipping point, right? When you decide I'm going all in and I'm going to go bet on myself. So if you wouldn't mind, Howard, tell us a little bit about you and then how you got in, into business. Sure. Uh, there's a number of different pieces I can, I can share you. I appreciate how much you have shared already. Uh, I'm a, I'm a marketer. I've been in working marketing for over 25 years. Currently I am a profit acceleration coach. So I work with small business owners, who've been working for too long and too hard, have not seen all the efforts of their business and their results. And as, uh, as, as Richard described, given 45 minutes at a time, I can show them how to triple their leads, double their sales, and find $100,000 in their business without them spending additional dollar in marketing or advertising. So I started with the coaching back a few years ago. And again, just with the same theme of this, this podcast, there was a moment where I was working accounts for a uh, marketing and advertising agency and the direction didn't seem to be flowing the way that uh, I was comfortable with, uh, that, that uh, the, the prospects were comfortable with. And I'll go into detail with that, but it was, it was, I got to speak to a lot of small business owners who were not able to follow through with the opportunity that was provided to them when they came into the agency. We had a great lead generation with a online TV portal. We bring small business owners in and interview them on a set, just as if they went to the local TV station. So they have this great video to put on their website, on social media. And as soon as they were done, they had that glow of being on an interviewed for the first time or the second time we pull them into a room and give them a pitch that we wanted to do a uh, audit of their business, a digital audit to show what they're doing right and wrong online with their website, with social media, with photos, with video. The data that came from that was incredible. It was a, a, a huge document, three video screens, an hour and a half presentation. And at that point we knew what was needed to, uh, to really build up this company. What I learned in that and what really what led me to my move was that small business owners don't always have the money to spend on something like that. Not everyone has a marketing budget line where they have money for investment in the business or in marketing. Mm -hmm. When we said it would cost $2,500 for this audit, nine out of 10 looked at that as, as a surprise expense and not an investment. 
And yeah. it really struck me the more conversations I had about this with, with business owners, the challenges they had without being able to do certain things and the lack of flexibility they had to really market and get the business and get creative, that there was a, an opening for me to, to help solve some of these problems for them. You know, it's not hard when you do the math, right? You know, when, when you come to marketing, people spend, look at spending money. Can they get that return on investment? Right. That's that's the trick. But if you can, if you can help me find $100,000 in my business, that's an easy math question. I'd be happy to spend uh, spend money. So, But every business owner wrestles with that. You know, and marketing is an intangible. And I do I imagine you help companies really kind of determine the ROI, that the metrics of how successful their program is? Well, I do a few things with them. The, the quickly, I bring 12 strategies that can be quickly implement into a business, not all for the, each business, but gives the variety of things that can be done. That's part of this finding hidden revenue and really kind of rebuilding their, uh, their whole prospecting process. But most small business owners jumped in because they had a passion for something, but that passion wasn't the marketing part or the bookkeeping part or the HR part. And these things become challenges as time goes on, whether it's immediate or whether it's down the line. And a lot of times I'm, I'm kind of unraveling things with business owners and get them to kind of start fresh with um, how they're utilizing their website. Is it a digital brochure or is it a 24 seven salesperson? Because you really want it to be a salesperson that you can find ways to interact with an audience as opposed to just putting things out there. I am the best plumber that there is and I do great service and I have these specials. No one wants to read an III website. They want to read about someone addressing their needs because no matter what the situation is, there's two concepts, there's two concerns that are going on in people's heads when they're starting to do this journey for whatever they're looking for. There's a problem they have they don't want and a result they want they don't have. And if you're able to start answering those questions, it gives them a reason to pause on your website. And there is the opportunity for them to become a prospect. If they come to your site and they don't understand what's going on or they, it takes too long to read all the information there, or it's not talking about them, they're going to start going to someone else to try to find that answer. Yeah, yeah, great. I want to take it back a little bit. When you decide to go all in, okay, because now you're dealing with business owners, right? Small business owners, and they all had to make that decision at some point in their in their life to invest in themselves, bet on themselves. How about for you? Did you, did you, was that an easy decision? Did you have to overcome some mental hurdles? Did you have naysayers in your center of influence? Uh, tell us a little bit about getting to that actual decision-making process. It was a, it was a timing situation and the timing was bad. It was not the best timing for me. We had some things going on uh, in the in family that the last thing I needed to do is go out and do something independent. I really didn't have a place to work in the process. I've always had a, an office to go to. So this was a big change as well. Working out of the house was a, was a challenge. Uh, I finally learned about co-works in the, in the community and able to find one close that was able to not only find a place to sit and do, do work, but have a conference room to hold events and meetings, which, which was helpful. Um, so it all, my, my biggest thought and suggestion, which is something I would have loved to have had when I, when I made the jump, is that you need to have that some level of financial investment for yourself. Um, I didn't have a little nest egg that I was holding for, okay, I'm going to start a business when I did this. And that always was some of the challenges that I had in, uh, in, in ramping up because there are certain programs I could have participated in and which have made my ramp up a whole lot faster but I didn't have the funds at the time. Um, it's important to be able to take on courses and coaching and, uh, and implementations into your business, whether it's building a better website as an example, or taking on someone to do social media so you don't have to do it and you're focusing on your, 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 the work at hand. Um, those are things that would have been somewhat helpful with me with, with my start because the things that I do, I do a lot of social media, a lot, a lot of interactive video with the with the tv hosting that i do so um it would be it would have been great to have that person to do the type of posting that i wanted without me having to do it and taking away from something else so it, it was it was ill-timed but it's it seemed to move me in the in a in a the different direction that i needed to be moving in 
You know, it's interesting. There's a saying in life, uh, the shoemaker's kids have no shoes, right? Uh, you're a marketing company for other people, and now you start your own, and you need to have the wherewithal to get your marketing done. And so uh, that's pretty typical how business and life goes. So maybe looking back, would you say you just try to build a little bit bigger nest egg before you would jump in or, or find some more capital somewhere? Uh, yeah, I would do two things. You, 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 I would... I would not say, okay, today's the day I'm quitting and jump and do it. You want to say, okay, so today is uh, the, towards the end of August. And let's say October 1st is going to be my start date. So in that time, you're gathering information. You're gathering, you're, you're, you're focusing on your, your finances to see what kind of lo business loan you can get for the business um, or investor or something so that you have funds to survive during the uh, the beginning because you may not have sales. Uh, it may take a few months for you to get your first sales while you're you're constructing the back end, let's say. Um, and you need to figure to make things a little bit easier on that and also have the the, the the money for the infrastructure. Sometimes you're you have to rent a place because you're you're gonna have a storefront. Uh, sometimes you need to bring on staff and they're gonna need salary. So there's a lot of good funders out there to help people do that, but you really want to have that plan ahead as opposed to just saying, okay, here's day one, open up the laptop, what's next? Exactly right. Good planning, good strategy. Um, but there's a mindset behind that. Like you're going to do it anyhow. I mean, you're, you're, you're determined to go do it, right? Is that it? It was, it, the, the, let's say the, the skies aligned that this was the right direction for me to go and on the day that I, uh, I made the decision to do it. Um, but you really want to have a broader plan. Like thankfully for me, I do have a background in marketing. So I was able to get myself started easy, but there's also a lot of late nights of, of doing things online to, to set up these pieces and set up events. And again, it was a different, it's I say it was a different world back in 2019, but it really was. So that was a lot of live events and, and getting people to, to show up to uh, a little breakfast so you, where, you're, where you're pitching different things as opposed to and the networking events as opposed to a lot of things that really turned online only uh, nine, 10 months later. Yeah, absolutely. You know, people get to this decision-making point some voluntarily uh, and some involuntarily. They were just lost their job or something happened in their life that had a cause them to do it. Uh, but I think it's a good advice, what you're saying, is no matter how you get there, it's still good to have planning, strategy, think it through, you know, because you're going to be faced with a lot of decisions, never perfected. I'm sure you're always learning, right? But let me ask you a question. So going backwards, you said maybe you would have a little more capital or at least try to put that together if you if you could do life over again. Um, but to, what other what kind of decision have you made that you say would was had the biggest impact on your success? They made, you, you made some right decisions, too. I uh, definitely, definitely made some right decisions. Definitely um, was able to get on, um, bring some clients on that really were helpful to me to, to flesh out some of the, the, the thoughts that I, that I had. Like I've worked with clients for years in different ways, whether it was, I used to work in, in baseball and uh, I would come up with, with campaigns for people in the ballpark that would give them the exposure they're looking for to have that return on investment. I worked in national local radio coming up with the, uh, with the, um, the campaigns and the scripts for the commercials and the recordings that would really get a, a message out there resonating, get a response and people, uh, people connecting with them to do business. So, and then running to two different advertising agencies with creating accounts. So I knew what to do, the structure, what people needed. But the coaching was a little bit different where it really was a lot of personal nurturing as opposed to here's a plan we're going to implement. Because some people, it was, it was they were solopreneurs and this was their baby and some had a few other um, uh, staff with them. So it, uh, some of it was helping them understand how to be a leader and, and interact with their staff. Uh, it was, so every little piece was, was different. And for me, that was rewarding because it wasn't the same thing. Not, not that a lot of things I did was the same thing over and over. Yes, I worked, I worked in minor league baseball. So every night was a game. And that definitely felt toward a certain point in the season, the same thing over and over um, as, as fun and amazing and dream come true as it was for me. 
but, uh, but this was, here's a different challenge a business has. And here's another challenge that a different business has. And that, uh, that, that made things exciting. I want to dive into a little bit of, of your business, what you do, because you make a comment here, which is uh, it caught my attention. You come up with campaigns that actually convert. Okay. Uh, and there's so much thing about marketing out there. And, and I have bought marketing campaigns and it doesn't move the needle at all. And, uh, and you try to figure that out ahead of time. And sometimes you just have to go through it to find out the end of the story it didn't move. So tell us what is, you don't have to tell us your secret sauce unless you want to, but you, you have campaigns that convert. How so? Well, a lot of what I do is sharing the secret sauce. So my book, which you can download off of my website for free, goes through eight of the 12 strategies that I, uh, that I usually talk about when I'm doing some level of presentation or working with a, with a client. I, I love my, my favorite is our first meeting, which I call the good, the bad, the ugly. And because I want to know what's working, what isn't working, what didn't work, what's in, and the, the numbers that go along with that. So we can really structure what, what direction to go. Um, but there's, there's a lot of different strategy that are is very simple that people just don't think about when it comes to their business. So for example, when you have clients coming in and this varies with different types of businesses, it, a lot of people have an offer and that's it. This is my offer, take it or leave it. Um, the problem is there's a good chance at the very least 50-50 they're going to say, leave it and move on. You don't want someone to walk away with nothing. So you want to have something that's called a downsell. And a downsell is a strategy of, a, of an offer that is not at the level of what you were offering, but something less for less money. And it gives them, at the very least, on the lower end, a sampling of what can be done. On the, on the higher end, a, a, a different version of what can be done but sometimes it's the price that, that people are concerned about. And it may not be exactly what they want, but at least you're starting in the, in the process. Uh, this crazy stat that goes along with that is 34% of the time when you make an offer or something like that, someone's going to say yes. So mm -hmm. in the inverse, if you don't make an offer like that, you're leaving money on the table one third of the time. Yeah, that's a nice stat. It works. That's, that's, re that's real tangible money. All right, tell us about... You want to tell us more about your book? Uh, you know, people can get it. You said on Amazon, and you said free. Is that true? They can download for free. You, you can download for free from uh, from my website, profitmasterbusinesssolutions.com. So when you get to the the homepage. There it is to download. And where it is is these are strategies that work for businesses that again you may not see on a because you are not. A marketer and, and you haven't had this type of you haven't you've been that you've been and I love using plumbers you've been a plumber before and you've done the work but you haven't sold anybody and you haven't been part of that process so so sometimes people pick it up quickly some people don't even see some of the opportunities there but again I've, everything starts with the with the website and a website has to be something that that communicates to the person doing the search because people are on a journey think about the things that you've done in your in your life that, that uh that are that are important that are that you're ready to spend some money on. So if you if you're redoing the pipes in your house, it's very different than if you have a pipe that bursts and water's rushing through. If mm -hmm. water's rushing in your house, you're going the first plumber that's going to come and you're going to pay the money. You're now an buyer and you're going to spend money right now to fix this pipe. If you're redoing the pipes, if you're redoing the fixtures, you're doing uh, lots of different things with regards to the to the bathroom itself. You're going to do research. You're going to uh, you, you're going to find uh, people who've used them before and get referrals and, and read reviews and and assess the uh, the uh, the the pitch that you've been given. Look at the numbers there. Uh, the company that sent it to you wants to stay top of mind, and there's many different ways to stay top of mind in that process without calling and harassing on the on the uh, on a regular basis. Because a lot of, what, what people don't understand is sometimes it takes up to 20 times of, uh, and of course, call them touches of interaction for people to finally make the move and they're ready to make a decision on, uh, on, on making a, uh, a, a capital investment like this. Um, when you do the right strategies and you have a website that is a 24 seven salesperson, they have a, a concept with how to respond to prospects. Mm -hmm. You can bring that down between five and 12 times. I, uh, I spoke to someone last month and it amazed me. Like they, they, they feel they're the best in the business, what they do. And uh, 
they're in, in the, the rental business and someone will call and they'll give them the, the I have this type of event and you have these type of people and they'll give them the itinerary of uh, here's how much it's going to cost. And the person says, yes, they got a deal. They make a transaction and put it on the calendar. If they say, no, I got to think about it. They don't call them back. Hmm. They don't follow up. They don't reach out to them. See, maybe, maybe there's a, they, they looked at two other people and their prices are better or their customer service is better, or there's something you can sweeten it in the, in the process. The amount of money that they leave on the table every day is astounding. And they did, they weren't getting that, uh, that they had been doing that because it was like, we're, we're doing great. I'm happy with my numbers, but how much more so can the numbers be if you followed up one time, two times? Really, I used to have a chart in radio sales. I had 10 times. I would call someone or text them or something and I'd mark off each time. So if they haven't come to me by 10 times, they're not interested, but they might hit me on the seventh. Or they might hit me on the on the ninth. Um, the majority of people, what kind of bail after what two or three? Exactly, that's the point. The most of these companies, your, your your competition is not doing that. So if you're <laughs> in that area that they're working in in the in the uh, the rental business, it's prime time for the uh, the, the competitors, and that's how they're they're surviving because yeah. they're following up and getting the business that he just doesn't look at. What a great tip for those of you who are listening. If you if you if you're bailing at number three, stay in the game till you get seven more steps to go, and there's some there's at least 30, 40 percent more business you can generate. Great tip there. Uh, before we jump into this next question, who you mentioned plumbers? So uh, if so, our listeners can get a visual. Um, who is your customer? Uh, when you say small business, is are you is this trades or are you just do anything from trades to tech companies? I'm a I'm a generalist because of the experience I've had working in in different agencies that have worked with lots of different types of businesses. Um, I love I, I love home improvement companies because mm-hmm. um, they they really are they deal with so many different types of customers and you can do certain things we can create create a whole relationship with them and do a joint venture partnership. So we had something called in here. I'm in, I'm again I'm in Jacksonville, Florida. And when I moved here, it was radio commercials for the big six. And there were all different types of home brew companies that, that banded together and they did one campaign. And so if you had an issue with your siding or your windows or, or blinds or paints, what have you, call the big six and they filter these calls different ways and made their, their spend a lot more powerful and went further. And they, they had a different a certain relationship financially between all of them of, of the deal came through that everyone would benefit from it. But so it's, it's again, part of these strategies that people don't utilize, but getting back to your question, I've worked for a lot with a lot of different types of, I will call them unique businesses as opposed to some of the, the, the usual businesses that you would, mm-hmm. you would see. Um, a, a matchmaker worked with uh, over the last year, a uh, laser liposuction and helped them uh, brand themselves and, and, and launch their business. Uh, it's each business, uh, each business is not the same, but there's mm-hmm. a lot of structure involved in a business in general that, uh, that, that is similar to others, even if it is in a different industry. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Well, whoever's listening out there, sounds like uh, Howard can definitely uh, meet your needs there. Give him a chance. We'll get a chance at the end of the program to learn how to get a hold of Howard. I'm going to switch gears on you now. All right. Our listeners, like everybody today, is you know watching the news. We have labor issues. We have uh, supply chain. We have recession, whether you believe it or not. We have wars going on. We're tail end, hopefully, of a pandemic. And yet we got to get up every morning and go to work, do business. Uh, I'd like to know how a couple things. How are you navigating the headwinds? Uh, is there any disciplines that you've put in place for yourself to keep yourself you know, a step ahead? But how, what's going on today? Because there's a lot of things going on in to run a business as a CEO of a company. There definitely are. And you want to follow the, the, the information that's out there that is useful to you. Um, yeah, there, there are businesses that had to raise their rates because or, or, their, or their pricing, depending on what they're doing because of inflation, because of challenges they've had in the uh, the supply chain getting items and you need to monitor whether that's palatable for your audience. Some will take it on. It depends on how you do it. Um, restaurants, I think, have done a, a, 
a disservice to the, the, the customer at times because of these, these additional fees they've added to the bill as opposed to making a dish a dollar more than it was uh, before and figuring out ways that, that, that again, more palatable to the, the consumer. Um, but there's also the benefit of not raising your prices and as long as it really isn't harming you um, and, and making that as a, uh, as a lead, that, that this is how much we care about our customers. And again, a lot of that has to do with the relationship you have, how much communicating you're doing with, with them. This is very important to keep the, uh, the, the lines of communication open once you have someone as a client, a customer, whether they've used you once or they use you 10 times. Um, you want them here for the 11th time. You want them for the mm -hmm. second time. You want them to refer someone to you. So having that communication is important and utilizing the assets that you have. So uh, we are not raising our prices. It's important to us that it does not affect you because a lot of things are affecting you. That message can go a long way if you have the message uh, uh, apparatus to, uh, to share that with them. Being in the marketing space, is this a great opportunity for you to help companies who are wrestling with this, all these things are circ circling around the headwinds to show them different ways to uh, create opportunities out of chaos. Is this, is this a good time for you? Anytime is a good time because um, like I've always been a sponge. I want to, I want to soak in as much information as possible, but there is no, first and foremost, there's nothing wrong with asking for help. And I think a lot of business owners are have challenges and don't know how or where or, or, or the means to ask, and they don't. And then, then they try to, to float on through, even though that with the right help, they could sail on through. Um, so I'm always, I, I always answer questions for people in general. I'm, I'm always happy to answer general questions. But working with someone one-on-one, -on -one, there really is a value to it to, uh, to really show them the growth that they can achieve and make, like, I, I love all these different types of elevator pitch and lines that, uh, that, that, uh, that I use as part of my conversations. And uh, the two that I love using is that one is I want people to love their business again or more than they do now. And uh, another one that ends, I, I don't just want to be someone's marketing strategist, I want to be the retirement strategist. So I want to help them build their business if this is what they retire on whether they're selling it to someone or, or passing along, whatever they're doing, it, it should be something that brings them joy and brings them a good return in the, in the process. You know, I've talked to a lot of CEOs on, uh, and owners of companies on this program. Uh, m almost everybody has said this is in chaos, in down markets, et cetera. This is where you find the best opportunities. Uh, many owners and founders are fearful, you know, Many people who want to leave corporate America are fearful. Uh, do you see it as places to find opportunity today? The answer is yes. The, 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 the saying goes that in a crisis, the person that's going to do the best is the one that's spending money and, uh, and getting their message out there. Uh, those that said, okay, we're in a pandemic where we have, our customers aren't coming through our doors. Let's get creative and message to them how they still can interact with us and, 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 and be a part of what they've been comfortable and used to really did well in the pandemic. There are people who did their companies that did extraordinarily well in the, uh, during the pandemic. And there are some, that, there are many that closed their doors and they just couldn't figure it out and couldn't get, get the, again, didn't do a lot to get answers um, or the answers they were being given were ones that weren't helping them navigate. And they did, they shut down. They didn't do as well. It really was stressful number of months during the shutdown periods, whatever location that, that you're in and the, the length that they were. Um, but you want to figure out what you can do. Again, the, during that time, it was pivot and communicate were the two words that I kept saying. You know, it's what, what, how are you going to pivot and how are you going to communicate what you're doing? If you're not communicating, then people aren't going to respond to you because they, they don't hear silence. Yeah, interesting. I'm, I'm in the franchise industry, and I, I would answer this question saying, uh, depends what sector you're in, like home improvement sector exploded in COVID and hasn't stopped. Uh, other sectors, we always said if the, the strong survived and actually thrived because the, they were able to take advantage of some opportunities where maybe some of the 
weaker competitors had gone away. So, um, so there was a lot of people grew in COVID. A lot of people did, and I think those. I think it was pivoting and being able to take a look at their business and adjust. I want to switch gears. You use the word sponge. You're a sponge. Uh, I call that a lifelong learner. What are you learning right now that you would want to share with anybody? I have a great opportunity every week where I am, again, I'm a a host on an online TV portal called dailyadbrief.com. I host a show called Marketing Champions. And the the key term is brief. They're five-minute interviews with CEOs and executives uh, in, in from marketing advertising agencies and from companies. And I get to ask them, what are they doing for their clients? So mm-hmm. I am learning, I, I, I may interview anywhere between three and 15 people a day. I do these sessions on, on Mondays and I'm like, what, what are you doing? And the, the key things that, that jump out at me is data. You need to look at your statistics. If you don't have Google Analytics connected to your website, that's the first thing you should do once this podcast is over. So you may not have information from, from the past, but moving forward, you're going to know how many people came to your website, what time they came, they come there, the certain demographic information, what pages they're going to, a lot of good data to let you know what you're doing is right. So if you're trying to drive people to your website, whether people are showing up or not. Um, the, the other piece uh, was, is how they're utilizing social media, how much video you're doing. Mm-hmm. So video is, the, is really the second, if I'm ranking words, video is the second word that, that comes up and you can do it in a number of ways, whether it's a channel on YouTube, whether it's something on your website, whether it's things you're sending out to clients as part of their emails. And uh, what I find amazing on social media is TikTok, where when I first heard about TikTok, it was about lip syncing uh, dance uh, songs and, and, and teenagers and adults trying to be teenagers. But it really is a it's a, it's an addictive site where people keep flipping through these videos, and once you start to get your audience, they they are uh, they're very attentive to you in a short form. There's nothing can be more than three minutes, and a lot of them are shorter than that. And you can really get a message that resonates out there, and get fun and creative with it, even if you might not feel you're fun or creative. So, so I'll, I won't spend too much time, but I just don't think about TikTok in the normal sense of marketing. But you're saying now businesses are actually implementing TikTok in their marketing strategies. Whether it's whether it's using influencers from TikTok and, and spending money to, to promote their uh, their products or doing think creative things on there, because you're finding it, it there's sites that every people are within Facebook, within Instagram, within TikTok. So Instagram can put out reels and people put in videos and you can sit there and lo and behold, 20 minutes have gone by and all you've been doing is watching these videos. So TikTok is the same thing mm-hmm. and you really can absorb some information. I see some, so there's a lot of people I've learned from on TikTok who are really doing it well. Once I started getting this, uh, it was just, it, it was over and over and over the people that I'm, that I'm talking to using TikTok for their clients. Fantastic. Fantastic. Hope everybody's listening. A uh, great way to check in with Howard to see how maybe you can implement in that your in that into your business. Last question here. Uh, what, what advice would you like to give to our listeners who are considering one of two things? Either they own a company, they want to expand and they haven't created another revenue stream, or they're corporate America sitting at their desk right now going, gosh, it's time for me to go jump in. What advice would you want to give them? What last words? Well, I think that the first thing, as I said before, is, is, is plan ahead. Come up with a plan uh, and, and have as much funding as possible to get yourself started. If, you, if you're starting out something new, if you're trying to add on another uh, revenue stream, again, a lot of that's planning too. Well, what, what makes sense? Um, a lot of with, um, with some of the strategy there, there's also the cross-sell strategy. So you might bring something on that you're partnering with an offer that you already have. And that could bring in bring in money. It's um, I love using McDonald's as uh, some of these examples. So cross sell is I've I've gone to McDonald's and I've ordered a burger. The first thing I say is, do you want fries with that? Mm-hmm. And if I do want fries, I say yes. They just cross sold me. They added something that that goes with the item that I bought, and uh, and it's now part of my purchase. I'm I'm just, I'm ready to buy. So here it is. Add something else to it. So those are very easy ways to add lines of, uh, of income that may not go into a lot of big research and development to do. Um, but the big thing is, it is very important that you have guidance to do that. So obviously, I work with small businesses that 
that are, are looking to add or just looking to to get a better sense of who they are and 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 grow their revenues. I also have different means to uh, to address the, those that are just starting out because you don't have that marketing background and you may not have the funds as part of what you're doing for a full time coach. So those that have the money for a full time coach to get started is absolutely the best thing because you have the guidance and and a, and a real sounding board in every decision that you're making. Um, but not I have I I love the concept that college didn't teach you how to become a uh, a small business owner entrepreneur. They taught you how to be an employee. So I set up a website, college, college didn't teach you.com, where I have a, a full course on small business marketing for those who really can't afford the full coaching, but need the coaching and need, and need a, uh, a real guide to teach them how to uh, really develop their business. Fantastic. Yeah, there's nothing more important than business development under, and marketing, obviously, is the umbrella for that. Okay, so how can our listeners get a hold of you? Uh, websites, telephone numbers, you know. How would you like to get in the whole of you? The best uh, way is my website is ProfitMasterBusinessSolutions.com. You can search me online, Howard Walpuff. I'm very active on LinkedIn and uh, type me in there. I'll jump up uh, immediately. And uh, if, you, if, you have a, if you have questions about your business, um, I'm happy to answer them. I set up the site, TalkToHoward.com. It goes right to my calendar and you can book a 30-minute session and we can talk. We can figure out what, whether it's figuring out how to what you're, you're trying to jump into, you need a, a sounding board or you need assistance and guidance to get you from point A to point B to point C. Fantastic. Well, Howard, on behalf of all our listeners, I just want to say thank you for taking time out of your day to share your thoughts and wisdom with the people who got a chance to listen to this podcast. This podcast will be uh, on all podcast platforms here in the next few weeks and you, you can get uh, the notes from there as well as reach out to Howard directly as he mentioned. Um, Howard, thanks for your time today. It was a really enjoyable interview, and I hope you have a great day. Rich, thank you so much. Rich LeBron here. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast, Get It Done Entrepreneurs. If you are a successful business owner who would like to be on this program, please visit us at rlebrun.com forward slash podcast and fill out the form and we will reach out to you. If you got something out of this interview, would you share this episode on social media? Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or post it on the socials. If you know someone that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let them know about the show and include the hashtag Get It Done Entrepreneurs. I love seeing your posts and guest suggestions. We are regularly putting out new episodes and content. To make sure you don't miss any episodes, go ahead and subscribe. Your thumbs up ratings and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and mean a lot to me and my team. Want to know more? Go to our website, rlebrun.com, or follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for listening. We will see you next time.